I'd be curious, has this ever happened to you? You're like, I'm gonna declutter my bedroom today. And you start going through your stuff and you come across something and you're like, okay, these shoes aren't that comfortable. They don't really fit that well. But I do have that one outfit that I wear them with. And so I only wear them like once or twice a year. But if I wanna get dressed up for fall, like these are really the only shoes I wear with that one pair of pants. And before you know it, it's like, you're trying to build a case for keeping the item when your hope was actually to declutter a bunch of stuff. And then you go on to the next item and you're like, well, the sleeves are kind of big. It makes me look kind of disproportionate. Um, but if I, if I hold my arms just right, or if I only use it like in Zoom calls, then I like it. So, I mean, it still has a take on. I haven't actually ever worn it, but I should probably keep it just in case. And so today I wanna to talk about this idea if you're a chronic overthinker. If decluttering is very difficult for you because these aren't just cut and dry decisions. <laughs> and so there's been a lot of times where I've felt bad because someone will say like, I have a really hard time parting with stuff. I think of all the ways I could use it. Everything feels difficult to declutter and to work through. And a lot of times I'm just like, I don't know what to say to that because to me, I don't understand keeping a pair of shoes that you would only wear for one very specific occasion that may or may not happen in the next year or something like that, right? I'm like, they're not comfortable. You don't wear them all the time. Like, catch you later. I don't have time for that, <laughs> right? And so I was watching a Facebook Live with Cass from Clutterbug the other day and she said, if you are a chronic overthinker, then you need rules. And I was like, that is so good. And for some of us, we fall somewhere in between. Some things have been fairly easy to declutter, but then we get to like kids toys or sentimental stuff and it's all over. And so let's talk through a few rules that we could put in place that are gonna help make these decisions easier. And so we've heard of the one year rule and that's if you haven't used it in the past year and if you're not for sure gonna use it in the next year, then we agree to let it go. And the idea that the past is the best predictor of the future. If I didn't have time yesterday to use this stuff, most likely I'm not gonna have time tomorrow. And often we glamorize the future thinking, oh, in this next season, I'm gonna have all this time. And it never happens, <laughs> right? It never happens. And with all of these rules that I'm gonna talk about, it can be very helpful to write these rules out or print them out and have them with you, like literally have it with you when you're decluttering because often if you are an analyzer, you're also a rule follower. So saying these are the decluttering rules that I am giving myself and that I am going to follow. Another one that can be really helpful is the 2020 rule. Again, you've heard of this, but if you can replace it for $20 and in 20 minutes and I am not using it, then I'm gonna agree to let it go. And I didn't, understand this rule in the past, I thought $20, that's actually a lot of money, right? I'm like, why would I donate something only to have to buy it again for $20? But what I didn't understand is what the minimalists say about it is that once you declutter it, you're not gonna buy it again. Okay, so let's put the $20 rule to the test. So again, if we're not using it and we can replace it for $20, we are gonna stick to this rule. So this is a basket with stuff left over from our laundry room makeover. So we had like this wire basket that could hang under the shelving in there. I didn't wanna get rid of it right away because I wasn't sure if we would miss having it. Uh, we have not missed it. It costs, I think like $8.99, so it is well under $20. I could replace it in 20 minutes. So this is going to go. We also had these extra canvas bins and again, they're they're very versatile. So I'm like, well, would we use them in the camper or somewhere else? But they are all well, these were $5 each. These I think were $10 each. So they're all under $20, but it still has the potential to hang me up because they're nice, they're storage containers. And I start to think, well, where could we use it? And my temptation is just to go put it in the basement. So in case we would need it, then we would have it. But I have to remember that this is still inventory that I have to manage and I'm trying to get my home to a point where it is super simple to manage, like so easy. And so that means for me right now in this season of life that I'm in, I don't hang on to things that are under $20 for someday because it's still something that I have to manage. So I'm gonna let all four of these go. This was a clock 
we had gotten for the camper. Uh, well, the camper we sold. And then I found a different one I liked even better, but I didn't get this returned to Amazon in time. Isn't that frustrating? I know there's ways around it, but that takes extra time. So it was a $15 clock. I have no use for it in our current camper. And so I'm gonna let this go. This was our old laundry basket. Again, I didn't know if we would miss it, if we could potentially use it in that camper, but there's no spot for it. So I'm just, like, that's not an option and I'm not gonna load up the camper now with all this extra stuff, right? So I'm gonna let that go. And these were just some extra food storage containers that came with like a little cooler the kids got for their lunches. But they're not, I can already tell, like they're not good quality, like they don't seal really well. So I don't wanna replace any of my current containers they're under five dollars they could be replaced really easily again it feels weird getting rid of storage stuff and organization stuff because for so long we all thought that's just what we needed to get organized right i'm gonna let this whole basket of perfectly good stuff go knowing that if any single piece i needed again i could replace for under twenty dollars but trusting that i'm gonna have no occasion to replace any of this and once it's gone i'm not gonna miss it but what's even better is that I'm gonna have this spot on our bedroom floor cleared up again. And this has been nagging at me since we did that like two months ago. I don't have anything now in our bedroom nagging at me. And that peace of mind is worth so much more than $20 or whatever the, the total is of all this stuff. This right here is priceless to me. Now, something that we would never ever declutter is our Helix mattress. And this video is sponsored by Helix. We are so grateful for their support, but we're also thankful because Tom and I sleep awesome on this mattress. And we could not say that about our last two mattresses. And we just got to the point where we're just like, so frustrated trying to find the right mattress. And so then we found Helix and it was so simple to the point where you might, especially you analyzers, like you might be a little skeptical because you're like, okay, I go online, I take the sleep quiz. It talks about what firmness of mattress do you like, what sleep position are you normally in? So Tom and I are stomach and side sleepers. And so it matched us with the Helix Dusk Lux and it has been great. Tom and I don't like super soft mattresses. We want it to be kind of firm, but not too firm, <laughs> right? So like, we're trying not to be picky, but I feel like as we get older, we've actually become pretty picky <laughs> with our mattress. Uh, to like, we go to hotels now, hotels that are known for having really good mattresses, and we're like, oh man, we just can't wait to get back home to our own mattress. And so we've had it for over a year, and we sleep so well on it, but you take the sleep quiz, it gets delivered to your door, and then it's very easy to set up, and you get it on your bed, you watch it in play, which is kind of fun. And then you get to try it out for 100 nights. And that's what makes us feel good about sharing it with you is that both that we've had a great experience, but that you get to try it out for 100 nights to see if it's a good fit for you. If it's not, you just call them up and they take care of everything of, of taking it back. But we just have to get a good night's sleep. I mean, it's just too hard to operate the next day and uh, to make good decisions if you don't get a good night's sleep. It just really wears on us. We have our link down below. If you click on it, you can save up to $200 and get two free pillows with your purchase. So thank you again, Helix, for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's talk about another rule is would I buy it again? I can't believe how many items in our house that we've put very little thought into purchasing. Like, I'll be like, oh, I'm scrolling on Instagram late at night or I see it at a garage sale or a thrift store. And so I buy it, it wasn't too expensive and I bring it into my house. And so I have put like hardly any thought or research into buying it. But then when it goes to decluttering, I'm like, oh, but I paid money for it and I don't know, I might use it in the future. And I kind of feel bad if I get rid of it before I even use it. And it's like, it was like an impulse buy. It, there was no thought to put into it. And now I'm putting all this thought into decluttering it. No, if I put hardly any thought to buying it, then I shouldn't put hardly any thought into getting rid of it. So would I buy it again? No, I wouldn't. So I'm gonna let it go. I'm not gonna let it torment me anymore. It's gone and I'm moving on. Okay, so like I said, I think it is super helpful to write these rules out and have them with you wherever you're going to declutter. And I actually thought about making a printable or, you know, click below and you can print it out. But I think there's actually something really powerful about you writing it out in your own handwriting 
and it kind of like solidifies the rules as you're writing it out. So picking out which rules really resonate with you and using those. And especially if, if you're feeling like at all overwhelmed or frazzled right now, like uh, most of us are, maybe just like two rules that really work for you or let's not also overwhelm ourselves with a number of rules, <laughs> right? So just pick out like two or three that you really like. And then I also, at the bottom, I put my goal, which is low inventory. And so that's optional. You can decide if you want to put a goal, but I thought it's kind of good. It's helpful for me if I get into any tough decisions to be like, okay, remember, what's the ultimate goal here to get down to low inventory? So, okay, so we have our list of questions and uh, we have it with us. So now we could go through a few examples quick. So if we're like, okay, beach towel. This is still getting used currently. It's just supposed to go in the basement for storage because sadly in Minnesota, we don't have beach weather <laughs> anymore. So this is just not in the right place. So I don't have to use the, the rules on this. I just need to go put this away quick. Oh, right. I forgot. But before I do, because it's going in the basement, I'm going to look for anything else that just needs to go in the basement. We have some nail filler and a gallon of paint. Um, these are still being used and need to go down there too. So I'm gonna run those down quick too. Okay, so now we have something like this. This could hang us up, right? This, like literally, it should get hung up on the wall. <laughs> um, so this used to hang when our bedroom was in that room on the wall. And then we moved over here and I got some different picture frames that kind of went with our style a little bit more. So now I have to decide what to do with this. And so let's look at our rules, the one year rule. Uh, we did use this in the past year, but do I see me using it in the upcoming year? So basically I need to decide, am I going to hang this on the wall again? Or do I just need to take the pictures out and then decide, am I gonna use the frame somewhere else or should I just donate it? And I've actually been thinking that I do wanna hang it on the wall right over there, but these are plaster walls and I've learned not just to hammer into them, to actually drill first. Usually goes much better. So I am gonna use this and I want to hang this up ASAP. So what can happen with things like this is that we decide, okay, I found a place I wanna keep it, but then it never gets hung up, right? So I am just gonna take a piece of painter's tape. We all do better with deadlines. And so I'm gonna say hang up by Friday or donate. I know Tom also likes these pictures, so I think he'll help me hang it up. So I'm gonna put it on the bed <laughs> so we'll see it tonight and get that hung up. It'll remind me to tell him and ask him about it too. This was like, um, I was looking for like sample bindings and stuff for a project. And so this was just a sample. It's like a sample journal, but there's like nothing in it. The kids do not need more of this stuff. And so for something like this, I would exercise the 2020 rule because I'm not using it. It could, I got it for free. So it could be replaced for $20 and in 20 minutes. And I don't need any more stuff like this floating around the house. So this can get donated. So then the shirt with the tag still on it, this is a great one for would I buy it again? No, 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 big bummer, right? But again, my goal is low inventory. And right now that goal is more important to me than feeling guilty about stuff I spent money on. So I'm gonna donate it and never, ever, ever have to think about it again. And one last rule that I think is really important is to ask, am I keeping this out of guilt? I've been talking about this quite a bit re recently, but I'm just a really aware now of how my house feels and how guilty clutter it does not feel good, <laughs> right? And that when I look at it and I see something and I'm like, ugh, that I don't want anything in my house making me feel that way. And so I was reading recently too about gifts and how you know often we feel guilty, not you know, that we need to keep gifts. And it said, remember that the joy of gifts is in the exchange of the giver being able to give the gift. And for you as the recipient, not necessarily about the, the actual gift itself, but the thought that was put behind it, that this person cares about you and wanted to recognize you. And that that sentiment or that feeling of appreciation or acknowledgement doesn't necessarily have to be embodied by the gift itself, that we can feel appreciated and uh, recognized by them without actually having to keep the item forever. We might keep it for a little while to enjoy it and to be reminded, but 
over time, we don't necessarily feel that same sentiment towards it. And it can then start to go the other way from like, wow, that was so kind of them to acknowledge me to darn it, what am I gonna do with this now? And so it's amazing how it can go from like, that was so sweet and thoughtful to a burden. And we don't wanna associate the person, I mean, if it's supposed to mean it's someone we like, we don't wanna associate them with a burden, right? So I think that's a sign once the gift has gone from like, oh, that's so cool, to like, darn it, I'm tired of dusting it and moving it around and like having to put it out every time they come over. That's like a clear sign that it's time for it to go, right? So if there's any things that we're keeping out of guilt to say 100%, I have permission, like write this on your rule sheet, right? I have permission to get rid of things that I'm just keeping out of guilt because I want my house to feel good and that's okay. Like that's totally fine for me to want that for myself. And so again, I don't want to like completely oversimplify or just dismiss, it, dismiss this like, well, if you're having a tough time decluttering, just make rules and it'll make everything super easy. What I've been hearing from others is that it still feels difficult in the beginning, but as you get into it and as you keep going and building some momentum, using these rules is very freeing and starts to make things easier. So it's hard in the beginning, but as you get going, you build confidence, you have more experience with it, you see that you've gotten rid of stuff and you don't miss it, so then you wanna get rid of more. Somebody asked me the other day, they're like, how can you get through the messy middle quicker and it's really using these rules like if you don't want to have to take like we talked about the onion like if you don't want it to have so many layers if you want to be able to skip ahead use these rules no matter if you're an over analyzer or not use these rules if you will use these rules faithfully you can skip ahead <laughs> layers and if you don't it's fine right it's totally fine but if anyone's like i just want to skip ahead i am so frustrated by my house use these rules faithfully on every single item in your house and you are going to experience so much freedom in your home and it is going to feel so good and it really really does work and so i would love to know are there any other rules that have been really helpful for you to kind of move past some of these mental stumbling blocks if you leave that down below it's super helpful i'm also going to link uh to a video that i did a little while back on the endowment effect which talks about how when we own something we automatically think that it's worth more it doesn't matter just because we own it every single thing in our house we think it's worth more it's just how it goes so I'm gonna link to that too because I think when we understand that better, it's just another tool to help us to be able to move through some of this stuff, especially if you have like special uh, expensive stuff or antique -y stuff or things like that, it can help us move through it quicker. So I will link to that as well, but I hope this is helpful. I love you and I'll see you again soon.